The Avid 11 Rack is a hardware guitar amp simulator that's great for quiet practice and simulating a wide variety of different guitar amps in the home studio. In this video series, we'll go over how to use the 11 Rack. For this video, we'll go over connecting our 11 Rack as an audio interface to our digital audio workstation, recording with it, and reamping a direct signal through the 11 Rack to reprocess the guitar signal in a different way. Before we get started, there are two versions of this that you can purchase. One version is just the 11 rack on its own, and the second is the 11 rack with the full version of Pro Tools. I've linked both of those in the video description, so be sure to check them out if you're interested in purchasing one of these units. Both of them are the updated 11 rack that works with the 11 rack editor, and it's worth getting one of those instead of a used version, which may still have the old firmware. The first thing we need to do is go over the basic controls and jacks found on the front and back of the 11 rack. On the left is the power switch. Then we have the volume knob. This adjusts the volume level in our headphones, but it also affects the recorded volume level, so we need to be careful of that. The edit slash back, save, SW1, and SW2 buttons are used to navigate through the 11 rack menus, and we'll cover those in another video. Down below we have six knobs that we can twist. These are used to control the various amp settings and effects, depending on where we are in the menu. Active knobs will light up, and the color will change if the setting is different than the preset and it's unsaved. The controls they're mapped to will appear on the screen up above. To the right is the scroll knob. We'll use this to navigate menus and make selections for the different settings we need to change. Beside that we have 8 buttons. Most of them are for turning on and off different effects. Each preset that we're using with the 11 rack has a slot for distortion, modulation, delay, reverb, and two additional effects pedals. With these buttons, we can turn those effects on and off easily without having to go into a menu. The effects loop button activates the effects loop, and this can be used with external pedals or effects through the inputs and outputs on the back of the 11 rack. On the bottom right, we have the tempo slash tuner button. If we tap this button, it adjusts the tempo the 11 rack is set to. Some of the effects use musical time that locks to the tempo. If we hold it down, we enter tuner mode to tune our instruments. On the far right, we have connections for a microphone at the top with a preamp level, 48 volt phantom power, and pad. Down below we have the headphone output, output jack to connect the 11 rack to another guitar amp, and the guitar input. The back of the 11 rack has a lot more connections that we can take a look at. First we have the effects loop for our pedals. The sends go to the inputs on the effects, and the returns to the outputs. We can set the level to rack or pedals. Next is the main output, which we can use if we want to connect the 11 rack to a PA system or monitor speakers. Down below are the line inputs if we want to use it as an effects processor. Then we have another output to amp if we're using stereo. The MIDI and expression pedal are used to control some of our effects and change the amp settings with a foot controller. The AES slash EBU and the SPDIF connections are digital audio connections we can use to connect the 11 rack to other audio devices. Finally, there's a USB connection that we need to record with the 11 rack and for another way to change the settings on the 11 rack quicker. Before we can get to using this audio interface, the first thing we need to make sure of is that the input is set correctly. From the main screen, press and hold the edit slash back button to open the options menu. Use the scroll knob to select Rig Input and press the SW1 button to make your selection. Then we'll see that one of the knobs down below lights up, and this acts to scroll through the various input options. We'll need to make sure it's set to Guitar. It should be set this way if it's the first time you're using it, but there are situations where this input needs to be changed, and we'll look at those situations later in this video. Once you've selected it, press the Edit slash Back button again to exit the menu. The 11 rack will now process that input. Connect the 11 rack to your computer over USB and power it on. The computer should be able to install the drivers for the software on its own. Now go to your digital audio workstation. We'll set the audio mode to ASIO to reduce latency and select the 11 rack as our audio device. The 11 rack is selected just like any other audio interface that we would want to enable for our software. Now that our digital audio workstation has our 11 rack detected, we'll add our tracks. How we do this depends on the software, but I'll be adding two audio tracks. On the first audio track, I'll set the input to the 11 rack's direct input. This uses the 11 rack as a direct box to record the clean guitar signal. I'll set the second input to the 11 rack's stereo output, which will record a stereo signal with the 11 rack's amp processing. 
Once that's done, I can arm the tracks and record the audio for the guitar. The reason we record a different track with a process signal is so that we can use a reamping technique later on. Otherwise, with just the process 11 rack signal, there's no way to undo the processing and change it after. In that case, to get a different sound, we would need to record the track again and we would lose the performance. With reamping, we can change the amp processing as many times as we need to, or we can even use it to layer different amp sounds. The first thing we're going to do for reamping is change the rig input. This is the same thing we did a few minutes ago when we were originally setting up the 11 rack. We'll hold down the edit slash back button to enter the menu and go to rig input. We'll set the rig input to reamp. In our software, we'll go to the signal routing for the direct guitar track and change the output of that track to the 11 rack reamp output. Now when we play the track, we should hear it play with a new amp processing. We can then arm a different track to record the 11 rack stereo output with the processing just like we did the first time. Just don't arm a track to record the direct signal again since that's not necessary. Now just record the new track with the processing and do this as many times as you need until you get the sound you want. When you're finished, just make sure to set the rig input back to the guitar input so that there are no issues the next time you use the 11 rack. Thanks for checking out this tutorial on the Avid 11 rack. If you found it helpful, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out our social media links in the video description down below to stay up to date on all our new content.